Whether a decision is programmed or non-programmed, six steps typically are associated with the effective decision process. Managers confront a decision requirement in the form of either a problem or an opportunity. The six steps typically associated with effective decision making are recognition of the decision requirement, diagnosis and analysis of causes, development of alternatives, selection of a desired alternative, implementation of selected alternative, and evaluation and feedback. A problem occurs when an organization accomplishment is less than established goals. Some aspect of performance is unsatisfactory. An opportunity exists when managers see potential accomplishment that exceeds specified current goals. Managers see the possibility of enhancing performance beyond current levels. Awareness of a problem or opportunity is the first step in the decision-making sequence, and it requires surveillance of the internal and external environment for issues that merit executive attention. Some information in this process comes from periodic financial reports, performance reports, and other sources that are designed to discover problems before they're too serious. Managers also take advantage of informal sources. They talk with other managers, gather opinions on how things are going, and seek advice on which problems should be tackled and which opportunities embraced. Once a problem or opportunity comes to a manager's attention, the understanding of the situation should be refined. Diagnosis is the step in the decision-making process in which managers analyze underlying causal factors associated with the decision situation. Many times, the real problem lies hidden behind the problem that managers think exists. By looking at a situation from different angles, managers can identify the true problem. In addition, they often discover opportunities they didn't realize were there. Managers should ask a series of questions to specify underlying causes. They include the following. What is the state of disequilibrium affecting us? When did it occur? Where did it occur? How did it occur? To whom did it occur? What is the urgency of the problem? What's the interconnectedness of the events? And what result came from which activity? Some experts recommend continually asking why to get to the root of a problem. A technique is sometimes called the five whys. It's a question asking method used to explore the root cause underlying a particular problem. The first why generally produces a superficial explanation for the problem, and each subsequent why probes deeper into the causes of the problem and potential solutions. The next stage is to generate possible alternative solutions that will respond to the needs of the situation and correct the underlying causes. Decision alternatives can be thought of as tools for reducing the difference between the organization's current and desired performance. Smart managers tap into the knowledge of people throughout the organization and sometimes even outside the organization for decision alternatives. Once feasible alternatives are developed, one must be selected. In this stage, managers try to select the most promising of several alternative courses of action. The best alternative solution is the one that best fits the overall goals and values of the organization and achieves the desired results using the fewest resources. Managers want to select the choice with the least amount of risk and uncertainty. Because some risk is inherent with most non-programmed decisions, managers try to gauge the prospects for success. They might rely on their intuition and experience to estimate whether a given course of action is likely to succeed. Basing choices on overall goals and values can also guide the selection of alternatives. Choosing among alternatives also depends on a manager's personality factors and willingness to accept risk and uncertainty. Risk propensity is the willingness to undertake risk with the opportunity of gaining an increased payoff. The level of risk a manager is willing to accept will influence the analysis of the cost and benefits to be derived from any decision. Now, implementation is all about the use of managerial, administrative, and persuasive abilities to ensure that the chosen alternative is carried out. The ultimate success of a chosen alternative depends on whether it can be translated into action. Sometimes an alternative never becomes a reality because managers lack the resources or energy needed to make things happen, or they fail to involve people and achieve buy-in for the decision. Successful implementation may require discussion, trust building, and active engagement with people affected by the decision. Communication, motivation, and leadership skills must be used to see that the decision is carried out. 
When employees see that managers follow up on their decisions by tracking implementation success, they're more committed to positive action. In the evaluation stage of the decision process, our last phase, decision makers gather information that tells them how well the decision was implemented and whether it was effective in achieving its goals. Feedback helps managers make better decisions. Decision making is an ongoing process. It's not completed when a manager or board of directors makes a decision. Feedback provides decision makers with information that can perpetuate a new decision cycle. The decision may fail, thus generating a new analysis of a problem, evaluation of alternatives, and selection of an alternative. Many big problems are solved by trying several alternatives in sequence, each providing modest improvement. Feedback is part of the monitoring that assesses whether a new decision needs to be made. The decision-making process typically involves these six steps that we've talked about. Recognizing the need for a decision, diagnosing causes, developing alternatives, selecting an alternative, implementing that alternative, and evaluating decision effectiveness.